The Amphil in Sociology and Demography is very much what it says uh, on the tin. It is uh, a two-year master's degree with um, a, a rather heavy emphasis on demography, but demography within the context of sociology. So many of the courses, many of the sociology courses that people do on the MPhil are shared with the MSc in sociology. And then on top of that, there are specialized technical courses uh, on demography. Um, the structure of the MPhil. Um, it has um, quite a lot of different components. Some of these relate to the sociological side of the course, others to the demographic side. Relating to the sociological side, we have a course in sociological analysis, which is a kind of introduction to, a sort of thematic introduction uh, to major theoretical and empirical issues, contemporary issues in, in, in sociology. Um, we then have a core of research methods, which for the uh, for the MPhil in, in Sociology and Demography basically consists of statistics uh, and research design. Um, we have then specialised courses in, um, in Demography. There is a course in Demographic Analysis take, which teaches the, the main or principal uh, technical techniques uh, of Demography. There is a course in uh, Life Course Research which um, which looks at demographic issues from, surprise, surprise, a life course perspective. Um, a very interesting and important feature of the MPhil is the replication project. Um, what we do in that is we try to get people to take a piece of published research uh, and then go back to the original sources, in some, in some cases contact the original investigators, and try to reproduce with the original data exactly what uh, has been done before and it's really quite interesting um, uh, to see how often it is the case that it's not really possible uh, to do that which is a rather uh, sobering and educational experience for uh, the students that do it. We have in addition to that optional papers uh, of various sorts mostly uh, with uh, some kind of sociological content uh, and then on top of that we have the MPhil dissertation. The MPhil dissertation is a 30,000 words piece of, piece of research. It is a substantial uh, um, undertaking to do this. You really spend most of the second year of the degree concentrating on writing your, uh, your dissertation and we expect people to do a major piece of empirical research such as may be potentially publishable uh, in a journal. Some people do in fact go on to have their, their work published. Um, well, one extremely obvious thing is I think I'm right in saying is it's, it is the only course in the country uh, which combines sociology and demography. Uh, so that is pretty, pretty unique. Um, demography tends to be a subject which is Storage has been combined with other subjects like geography, for example, or statistics or something like that. And I think we're, we're certainly unique in this, this country, I wouldn't necessarily say in the, in the whole world, but certainly in this country in putting these two together. Our department is very quantitative, so um, we're not just um, you know focusing on uh, you know theory and uh, things of that sort, but we also are taught how to create models to prove um, on a large scale with a large set of data, uh, whatever it is that we're trying to um, explain. So I think that that's an invaluable source of um, learning. I think the unique thing about the department. Um, is actually that it is incredibly cosmopolitan and diverse. We have literally people from all over the, all over the world, both on the faculty uh, and also among uh, the student body. It's really like a, a little United Nations here. Um, so you could say that we have a kind of international perspective uh, on sociology rather than, than just a, a UK-based perspective. I think one of the things that's great about this department is going to be, you know, when you're here on a taught course, you're going to be taught by um, a range of amazing people who do really interesting research.
research and use a really you know, fascinating set of different research methods. Um, and so yeah, I think you'll get a really interesting range of viewpoints and different uh, fields of expertise. Yes, I really enjoy uh, my MPhil program because I think it is a really great combination of both the macro and micro approaches to understanding the social world. We have modules like demographic analysis that focus on the uh, micro aspects to discovering uh, the empirical regularities in the world, but at the same time we also have uh, courses like uh, life course research that focus on the micro perspective that we understand the causes and mechanisms behind those regularities. What do I like about the course? Um, I think this course really um, gives us the tool um, to uh, create very extensive, interesting, powerful um, researches, not just uh, from either qualitative or quantitative side, but it kind of tries to combine both, um, um, both realms really to create um, very um, impactful um, pieces of academia. I think in general I really like, really enjoy the academic atmosphere in the department uh, because it is really easy to get engaged in the uh, intellectual conversation with my classmate who comes from different parts of the world and uh, we can discuss a, range, a wide range of topics from like demographic trend in the US to like violence in Mex Mexico or maybe labor market in Turkey and even organized crime in European countries so it is uh, really good I can learn what is really going on in different parts of the world and it is also really uh, easy to like get in touch with other professors and teachers uh, to book office hours with them and discuss what you are interested in. So, uh, one of my favorite courses right now is um, political sociology and the reason is that this combines um, elements of politics uh, with uh, understanding how masses and societies um, you know uh, vote and what's the voting behavior uh, what are the the cleavages the the, the you know the explanatory explanatory variables that lead to certain election outcomes for example for example and um, this is something I'm extremely interested in understanding because you know, politics do shape our societies and I think that's what, um, you know, one of the most important aims of um, sociology to understand how societies change. I think uh, I really like, like, there's a lot of libraries in Oxford, so like during the term time, if you want to find a quiet space to study, then it is really convenient. And if you want to uh, relax, there's a lot of like uh, music event in Sheldonian Theater or like choir in different colleges. And uh, there's also pop metal where there's wild animals and beautiful environment you can enjoy. So. Yeah, it's it's very good, and there's uh, uh, outside the department. There's also many seminar series and lecture series given by those world leading experts. Uh, basically, the feeling is that you are living in the center of the world of knowledge. Yeah, uh, it's very convenient to go around. You have so many cute shops, so many pubs. They all come together. Um, there are so many libraries. So if you, they you know. Um, a person who really thrives in libraries and really gets um, you know, their mood up for studying in different sorts of libraries. You have so much variety in Oxford. Oxford is a really lovely city to study and live in. I live in my college and I really enjoy the collegiate system here at Oxford. Uh, of course, you get to know people from different backgrounds outside the department. And different colleges have different cultures and histories and it is a really nice adventure to visit and explore different colleges. A student in our department would do well if they come in with a question or an idea about a sociological mechanism or process. So tell us what you're interested in, tell us what you would like to know. Um, in the world of sociology? I think first of all you have to be relatively open-minded and then you have to be curious about empirical issues. 
In other words, you have to be really motivated by questions where, in principle, we can collect evidence or data, either qualitative evidence or quantitative uh, evidence, which will help you answer some kind of specific empirical question. I think the most important thing is finding a, an interesting question you really want to explore and just like let the curiosity perhaps like guide you where to go, yeah. I think um, well, one of the things that um, I say a lot to my students when I'm sort of talking about what makes a good essay or what I'm looking for in a brilliant student is this idea of being analytical. So I think you know anyone can do really well on this course if you are very analytical. And the kind of things that I mean by that, you know, is um, thinking through very carefully uh, your sociological explanation. While you're writing, you might want to think about alternative explanations and be ready with a counter-argument. We're looking for explanations that will account for the existing body of evidence, for example. You know, how do the theory and the evidence come together? And uh, good explanations are usually quite complex, so you know, be willing to sort of dig deep and get into the complexities of things. Uh, I would advise prospective students to be clear and specific about their research question. Uh, I know it is important to demonstrate your academic skills and relevant experience, but it is equally important to have a very clear mind about your research questions. You can possibly think of uh, why this is an important area to, to be studied and what potential methodologies can be applied and have you thought about uh, any data collection issue and I think having such a clear mind about research questions can really make your personal statement more concrete and convincing. Uh, be open-minded enough to um, change your idea as you are doing your degree that you don't need to stick with your initial idea. What you write in your research proposal as a master's student for example doesn't need to stay the same and actually um, you know if as you're studying, if you find that um, there are just different perspectives that you could, for example, tackle the same topic or a similar topic, um, you should be open-minded enough to, um, you know, to accept those suggestions because they, um, you know, they come from experts in the field. The short answer is very many different things. Obviously, quite a large proportion carry on. Uh, to doing a research degree either in this department or in other departments. Um, we will have people who go on and work for, in, in broadly speaking, social research in the private sector or the non-profit sector. Um, we'll have people who go on and uh, um, work as consultants of, of various sorts, join the civil service. Um, Actually, there's probably hardly anything that someone hasn't done. And of course, because we have uh, a rather large number of international students, many of those go on to have extremely successful careers in their own countries. I think I will continue with DPhil or PhD studies and I'm interested in the uh, recent mortality trend in the US and uh, and I think the death of despair narrative, which is debatable, I guess. And I'm also interested in the fertility rate decline in most developed countries. So I will try to explore the social behavior and the biological mechanisms behind these demographic patterns. Yeah, I would uh, possibly pursue a DPhil after finish my MPhil program. Uh, my current study experience here at Oxford really strengthens my interest in the field of demography and the department is a really vibrant community with many world-leading scholars and I really look forward to continuing working and studying from them.